Hello and welcome back to Vampire. My name's Emma and this is Once Upon a Quest. In today's episode, we are going to go rescue Dr. Swansea from the pre-win vampire hunters who have taken him hostage. But before we do that, we're going to spend my 27,000 XP and do a massive level up first. If you want to skip the leveling up, you can just go down into the chapters and I have them marked so you can skip the leveling up part and just start into the gameplay if you want. Let's spend some sweet, sweet XP. I'm in my fancy mansion and my fancy bedroom. Let's spend 27,400 XP. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Okay, what do I want to do here? Shadow Mist is always good. Because it has a quick cooldown. I use it quite a lot. Uh, so I can spend 6,000 XP and get that up to 820 sh shadow damage. I think I'll do that. Ooh. Everything starts to get expensive XP wise when you're high level. Uh, coagulation. I do love a bit of coagulation. More blood gain. Yeah, let's do that. Nice, because that's giving me blood every time I use that, uh, that like control choke thing on anyone. Yeah, let's do that again. Okay, and then we can increase our health a little bit. That's always going to be helpful. Yeah, let's do that. It's so important. Like, if you run out of blood, you can't really do much. Okay, that is fully unlocked. Lovely stuff. And blood capacity we could increase as well. Yeah, let's do that. And then maybe some stamina. Should we upgrade our stamina as well? Yeah, why not? Because we do use stamina for everything. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 1300 left. I think we've spent it pretty wisely so far. Although I could upgrade the spring. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we upgraded, we upgraded our health, our stamina, our blood, thirst and absorption during combat quite a bit and upgraded the blood mist or the shadow mist, I mean, and I upgraded the spring just a little bit. So it has a cooler, uh, faster cooldown. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that was a chunk of XP and look, I'm level 36 now. What was I before? 29 or something? 36. Watch out, Dr. Swansea, here I come. I'm gonna rescue you, don't worry about it. Oh god. Oh, oh we're in the papers. Murder of Aloysius Dawson. Terrible news for London. The death of Aloysius Dawson, head of the Dawson Empire, occurred last night at around 4 a.m. One of his manor's chambermaids found him in his bed this morning, bathed in his own blood. She immediately reported the incident to the police. A number of Mr. Dawson's household staff are being currently being interviewed. Are currently being interviewed. But a clear culprit has yet to be identified. Born in the city, Mr. Dawson had been a benevolent patron of London and a faithful member of the Catholic Church for many years. He wore many hats. Tradesman, employer, father and brother. Father and brother. Oh no, is his family going to come and like get revenge on me? The lucky few who knew him personally myself included, knew that he was much more. He was a man of vision. He saw a glistening future for our crime-ridden capital. He saw the ways through which our families... Wait, through which? He saw the ways through which our families and friends could be protected from the dangers outside. He saw how he himself, as a man of wealth and influence, could use his fortune to the benefit of the people. Mr. Dawson had planned to, ret to turn the city into a fortress where the virtuous could live in peace. Sadly, this idea attracted the jealousy of others, and they did not let him live long enough to enjoy the fruit of his dedication. Mr. Dawson leaves a daughter and many admirers to mourn his loss. S.L.A. Who is S.L.A.? Um, so he has a daughter. She could come for revenge. And a brother, apparently. If his brother is still alive, he could come for revenge too. Oh, dear. Okay, so Clarence Crosley. 
Oh my god, he's so sick. How have I not cured him before? Okay. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I killed the priest in Whitechapel. Oh man. And unfortunately, Xiao Xun is very ill, but I have I've spent ages going around trying to find her and I cannot find her. I don't know where she lives. Uh, I'd really like to cure her, but I just I don't know. I, maybe I need to go and look for her. Pembroke Hospital is stable. Whitechapel is healthy. And the West End is critical now. So we have to probably run around and cure these people. Okay, we have a lot of work to do as a doctor. All of a sudden. Oh god, critical. It didn't help that I ate a bunch of people. Ah, wait a minute. I just found a letter. Old letter. My dear Avery, as I already told you several days ago, I may be forced to leave England, if only for a few months. While I'm away and until my son comes back to London, I want you to take the best care of our house. I already made the entire necessary arrangements to have your wages increased and paid as long as you'll work. You promised me you'd protect my dear wife and serve her to the best of your ability. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If I'm never to return, you are the only man I fully trust. Believe me, your most affectionate friend, Aubrey Reed. Okay, so this is in 1908. Um, yeah, I just found that letter here. So that's new. Okay, we level up. We're 36. This place is critical. And we need to go rescue Dr. Swansea. Oh yeah, this is the theatre. So can I uh, jump up the sneaky way in through the window like last time? Oh, we can. Yes. All right. I don't know what this is going to be like. I'm kind of nervous. So Prewin never left Doris's theatre after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters. Hmm. Yep. It smells like rotten meat. It wants near. I know it. It smells like rotten meat. You talking about me? That's not a very nice thing to say. Okay, see, look, they're level 32. That's fine, I can take them. I'm so strong now. After leveling up. Okay, so they're downstairs. Okay, there's nobody upstairs, which is kind of making me nervous. Anybody in the balcony? No? Anybody here? Oh, there's Dr. Swansea. Wait, where, where is he? I can barely see him. No, he's not on this level. He must be on the level below. Back here, and then we find the backstage door. This one's mine! I don't know if Dr. Swansea's in this room or not. Uh, I hate the chaplains. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, get me out of here. Oh my god. <laughs> this is going terribly. I've forgotten everything. There we go. Ah, I'm out of stamina. We'll crush Okay, I got one down. Yeah, okay, there's another down. The power of the Lord stop it! No, stop doing that. Okay, there we go. Oh boy. It's locked. It's locked, so unless we're supposed to find a key somewhere in this room, maybe? Because I didn't pick one up off the the bodies of these guys, unless I missed something. Oh, hang on, what's this? McCullum's report. 
I just finished reading Doris Fletcher's journal, as painful and dreadful as it was. My God, the woman planned to see everyone in London afflicted by infecting all who, who would come to her next play. It helped me understand greatly what is going on. Doris Fletcher's real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of some Harriet Jones. Oh my God, she's Harriet Jones's daughter? What? So Harriet Jones was the sick woman in hospital who had a really bad temper and then got turned into a, some sort of weird scowl. And she's she's been in the sewers with old Bridget and all the sewer scowls. So she's Harriet Jones's daughter. Okay. Um, okay, so Harriet Jones has been treated as a patient for a long time at the Pembroke Hospital. She clearly hated her mother. Yeah, we found the diary about her hating her mother. But used, I mean, Harriet Jones was a piece of work. Like, I don't blame her. But used, used her fame and notoriety to see her while visiting the poor and sick in the East End. I don't know exactly what happened then. Um, but this is how her mother infected her before returning to the theatre. And how she turned into that monstrosity that the leech known as Jonathan Reed finally defeated. The presence of that vampire in the same hospital where Harriet Jones was treated can't be a coincidence. I'm convinced she is deeply involved with the vampire plague going on in London right now. I'm also convinced Swansea is his accomplice and that these two are planning something more terrifying than anything the guard has ever faced. Maybe I should take some time to read the old books and manuscripts the guard uh, still possesses to get some answers. It may prove useful. In the meantime, I better send some patrols to investigate about what is occurring at the Pembroke Hospital. It took me two days to parse through the dusty registers and books we keep in the vault. God, I hate losing time like this. The search did prove fruitful for once. I found two pages that could be related to our present situation in a copy of William Marshall's memoirs. I took them with me to read more carefully. This creature Marshall says he fought in 1666. This disaster that aimed to destroy London. It is very similar to what happened with Doris Fletcher. Disease, infection hate of the living, a desire to see the city ransacked. I have no doubt that the bloody old leech of William Marshall is behind all this and that he is back. This could be our greatest accomplishment if the guard could at last find and destroy that old bastard. I believe what Marshall did in 1666 is exactly what Reed is trying to do now. Did the creature, the disaster, escape their will? Is it why... <clears throat> Is it why Marshall destroyed him in 1666 and Reed did the same with Doris Fletcher before she became such a creature? I don't know, but those two are clearly working together and Swansea is helping them. I will immediately give orders to have him arrested and interrogated. As for Reed, I'll destroy that evil beast myself and then we'll deal with William Marshall and this disaster thing. Prewin shall prevail once more. Um, hang on, so let me go back up to the beginning of that. Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. A disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. So, Doris Fletcher was going to become a big, scary monster called a disaster. And, but, so I'm a little confused. Are they saying that Harriet Jones infected Doris Fletcher or the other way around? Because it, in the, in... What we just read, it sounded like Harriet Jones infected Doris Fletcher, not the other way around. I'm not sure. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So is, is Harriet Jones the big baddie or is Doris Fletcher the big baddie or who is behind it all? This William Marshall, William Marshall guy from 1666. According to McCollum, that's what he thinks. This is no place for you, sir. Ah! I'll put an end to you. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, okay, we're doing okay. Oh my god. Good thing we leveled up. Now. It's locked, all right. Damn, locked again. We need to find a different key. Oh, we can go in here. Oh, nice. Another collectible. Okay. The Vampire Knight. William Marshall. So this is all about William Marshall. 
Forget the legend about the man, the one most of you'd never heard of, you lazy bastards. Forget the empty tomb in Temple Church. Forget the death of those among us who died trying to locate him. We, the guard, know that he is still hiding somewhere. That's the only fact we must keep in mind. Another small detail we need to keep in mind, this little fucker is clever. How many times have we thought we had cornered him to finally on- to only find old dust and cobwebs? Marshall has been a vampire for a thousand years. We're no match until we change our plans concerning his hunt. So here are a few questions for you lazy bastards, and I want them all answered before speaking of another great hunt to pin the leech down. Who helped him escape his den under Temple Church? I have a, uh, I have an idea. I think it's the Brothers of St. Stole, because the leader of the Brothers of St. Stole, Usher Tolltree, is basically his office is underneath, like, his underneath like a church in Temple Church, like that underground area. Um, we know now for a fact that a private contractor was paid to move a large coffin from the church a few years before we investigated the tomb. What exactly did the traders of Brotherhood of St. Paul or St. Paul discuss with Marshall when they met when, oh my God, when they meet in 1785 in London? We investigated the tomb. What exactly did the traitors of Brotherhood of St. Paul discuss with Marshall when they met in 1785 in London? The report of this meeting has been burnt, but witnesses remain of a, of a request made by Marshall to access a specific book in their library. Why does the monstros- monstrosity known as Lady Blackwood seem linked to Marshall? They exchanged letters. She went in London to meet him in 1786, according to the Brotherhood spies. She tried to discreetly buy his castle in Wales in 1793 before fleeing when spotted by by our fearless mentor, Kendall Stone. See the passion here? What happened during those few years? Why such agitation and activity? Answer these questions, my brothers, and you will find the path to our most eminent foe, William Marshall, oldest vampire of England, to survive our righteous wrath. Okay, there's a lot of new names here. So Lady Blackwood is a new name don't know who that is. Uh, Kendall Stone seems to be some sort of vampire hunter pre-win fearless mentor. I've never heard that name before either. Okay, so we're learning a little bit about this uh, Marshall guy, but honestly, I still have more questions. Okay, William Marshall's memoirs. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stole finally agreed to meet me in London. They proposed to meet inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemnity of these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster. Oh, he he defeated the disaster? But also the place where I fell. I agreed to their proposition. There, in the sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature. The Dus Astro. Dus Astro? The Eater of Stars. What? Who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate, primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul, and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord. It took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may have finally found it. Soon the raid shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Is this going to reverse vampirism? Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me the most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote, but that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes. I'm ready to endure this excruciating pain. Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. Um, uh, why would McCullum drink blood? I don't I have no idea what's going on. I'm so confused. Pin note, evidence safe. Until further notice, this safe will be used to store sensitive evidences. It must always be locked. If you need to access it, just find me on the last floor to get the key and bloody remember to bring it back to me when you're done. 
Rodney. I should find the key to that box. Rodney. It's locked, all right. Where am I going to find Rodney? On the last floor? Okay. Uh, do we go through this door now? Ah, oh, there's Dr. Edgar. Swansea. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. I mean, this is going to be a big trap, like, isn't it? What's going to happen now? Uh, Something's going to happen. They're going to, like, ambush me or something. Do you think? Like, Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Oh, he thinks he's dying. Oh, no. Punctured lung, broken ribs, and internal bleeding. Oh, no. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Jeffrey McCollum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... dare to attack us in the open. Hmm. What became of him? To prove him wrong, I let him go. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? I'm starting to think maybe Time it was a tell. mistake to let him go. The most that intriguing time. part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. Mm -hmm. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same ones. Okay, so the Brotherhood of Saint Paul stole. I think, I think he was right about them smuggling William Marshall's coffin out of the church when they were looking for it. So I think they do know about him because they probably have the same. If William Marshall wants to stop the disaster and they want to stop the disaster, then their goals align. And the pre wind vampire hunters were just kind of getting in the way. So I think he does know about William Marshall. I think you're hiding something, Edgar. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Uh, Jonathan, I, I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. Oh, man. Okay, why accuse us of creating the epidemic? What about William Marshall? What can you yeah, tell me about, about him. William Marshall? Not much. Like, maybe he created me. History paints the story. He was the greatest okay. knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why such a reputation? Why would he deserve such a reputation? I cannot say. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll has next to no intelligence on him. All I know is that he's supposed to be the oldest of all the British vampires. So they don't know anything about him? Damn, I thought they were maybe working together. Why is the guard of Prewin so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. If he was the only one to escape, that means we are all descended from William Marshall then. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. Yeah. I have it's nothing to, to hide, more. Jonathan. Nothing at all. Well then... Hmm. Okay, Darth Fletcher got infected in, in Pembroke. Hmm. Yeah, remember Harriet Jones? Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. The terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. 
When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Mm -hmm. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No, I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Something helpful, please, Dr. Swansea. <laughs> say something helpful. Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Okay, Miss so Fletcher once came to visit the sick. So Doris Fletcher infected Harriet. No, point. Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. Mm -hmm. What does this sad story have to do with us? I don't know. I don't know. I don't see the pattern. Don't you see the Come pattern? Come on, Edgar. What does it mean? Don't you see the pattern here? Is there bloodline? The epidemic? That's... The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical oh, plot. Is that you what did he was what? doing? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to did. find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbury's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, Lady I also Ashbury's kept samples blood? of her blood for my you research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar! This that's makes unethical. more sense now. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. If he cured Harriet Jones with vampire blood, then that's why she turned into probably a, like a powerful scowl kind of a thing, right? Well, Doris, no, but we're saying that Doris Fletcher infected her when she was in hospital. But, but now he's saying he treated Harriet Jones with vampire blood. And is that what caused? Or did they both combine, did the both, okay, did the vampire blood that he administered to her and her infection by Doris Fletcher, her daughter, did they both combine and make her into something weird? Like, I'm a little bit confused about it. Okay, I don't think he deserves to die because he was trying to heal her by using vampire blood. It's fine. Um, turn. Embrace. I'll make your death quicker. Let, let die. You deserve it. Turn. Oh, I could turn him into a vampire. Okay, let's do it. Oh, do I have any XP? No, Edgar. You are not going to die unless you want to. I don't have enough ex what, what, what XP do to do this, do I? I can save you, Edgar. I can turn your broken body into one like mine. You truly would? After all I've done, I, after all that's been said, you would offer me this gift? I have no way of knowing which punishment would be worse, Edgar. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna be fun. But it is not for me to well, decide. it will be fun. Eventually. So? Oh. Please, Jonathan, please. I beg you. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always searched for. Very he, he well. He did? He always wanted to be a vampire? Did he? I'm so confused. Prepare to die and be reborn. To face an eternity of guilt. I'm ready. Oh, indeed, I am ready. I don't remember him ever saying he wanted to be a vampire. Ew, ew. The noises are so gross. Enough! Ew.
He's got to survive the transition though now, doesn't he? Okay, so patient zero. Destroy Harriet Jones. Prepare to fight the disaster. Oh, I see how it did that. See, it's gone to minus XP. So it still let me turn him. And it's just given me minus XP because I didn't have enough. So that's cool. I like that we could still do it. Okay, so I'm a little bit confused about the Harriet Jones situation. So, okay, so we know that Doris Fletcher, who ran the acting school in the theatre, was this big source of infection. And we realised she was turning people into scowls who came to the theatre to see her shows. Her mother, Harriet Jones, was sick in hospital. Doris Fletcher went to visit her mother in hospital. And that's what we reckon is how she got infected. So then Harriet Jones got infected, turned into a scal thing. And then has been living in the sewers with the other scals. So I'm a little bit confused about what is what was the effect of Dr. Swansea treating her with the vampire blood from Lady Ashbury's blood. What was the effect of that? That's what I'm a little confused about. But anyway, let me know in the comments if you're as confused as me, because I'm very confused. Um, Are you going to wake up, Dr. Swansea? How long does this take? Because I've never turned anyone into a vampire before. Um, Am I supposed to wait for you? Oh, so that safe is to do with this quest. Oh, yeah. So do you remember Usher Talltree tasked us with finding his notebook? And the notebook is in the theater somewhere. So that's what's in that safe, I think. Okay, so this is telling me to go upstairs then. There should be a guy called Rodney. Is it this guy? Bad look at it. <laughs> Hopefully one of these guys is Rodney. Got me with his thingy. Oh yeah, we need that sweet sweet blood. I was out of blood there. There we go. Now open the box. Now we got the key. In here. Okay, here we go. I really don't know if I should read this. Oh, we absolutely should read this. He told us not to read his his notebook if we found it, but I'm totally gonna read this. Okay, so. So Usher Talltree is the leader of the St. Brothers of St. Paul's Stole, which is the same organisation that Dr. Swansea is from. The cards worry me for they keep on announcing. Oh yeah, he reads tarot cards. They keep on announcing the coming of an imprecise but terrible danger distinct from this awful war. I better call back the legates to London and tell them to observe and report any unusual events. The, the word legate is giving me such greedful throwbacks for any of you who remember greedful. Um, okay, something is definitely going on. The cards keep hiding what is approaching, and that can only mean something powerful is moving. Something so strong and potent, the cards cannot fully reveal its nature. All the legates but one are back in London. His mission in Lhasa, Lhasa is too crucial to be aborted. The only noticeable event is the frequent meetings between Aloysius Dawson and the Ascalon Club. It's nothing to worry about for now. A terrible epidemic is upon us, and I don't like this at all. My legates have been sent back overseas to protect them from the disease but also find any clue about the origin of the, of the plague I am not totally convinced this is all natural in the past we had many cases of vampire activity linked to linked with sudden epidemics we must remain vigilant all over the world hundreds of thousands dead, broken families, despair and affliction deeply rooted in our hearts this epidemic is a curse reports from every country tell me the catastrophe has no boundaries, no limits the good news is that the the disease seems to have withdrawn. The bad news is the cards keep on foreseeing a calamity. Cards were right from the beginning. A calamity is upon us. The best sign may be the return of the guard of Prewen. Geoffrey McCullum himself is back in London. He's actively inquiring and recruiting members for a new campaign. Whatever I may think of McCullum's methods, I must admit he has a good nose for danger. We must all stay alert. McCullum did not waste any time. At least three of his warhounds have been ordered to survey me. Same old hate, same old methods once again. They will inquire about all my moves, all my acquaintances and all my actions. 
I know they are convinced I am an immortal plotting against them, against humanity. Stupid hunters, I have no time for this. I may have my secrets, but I am not the conspiring foe they're after. But they are right about something. The cataclysm will not be avoided. For the second time since I am the primate of St. Paul, I fear the city. Scals are invading London and the entire country. No, not invading. They are already here. They are among us, released by the flesh of the many infected. Observers of the Brotherhood tell me the foreign, that foreign vampires are arriving from all over Europe, delighted to get their share of innocent and suffering flesh. This country, as we know it, may be on the verge of oblivion. We still don't know what is manoeuvring against us. The cards are still worrying me, as if the real danger was not revealed yet. I am convinced that the Guard of Prewen is about to launch a second great hunt. This is the only explanation to the patterns of activities deployed by McCullum. Control of strategic command posts all over the city, creation of many new weapons, robbery to quickly finance this expensive undertaking. I know my name will be on the list if they decide to hunt down all identified vampires in England, but I refuse to submit to this threat. A Prewen attack is imminent. Scouts and patrols are getting closer every night. I can't even blame them, for the situation is critical. A few reports even claim the Horned Vampire may be back. The Horned Vampire is the one I've been seeing in my blood visions. He had horns. But their blindness never ceases to astonish me. How can they keep considering me a foe? Have I not proved I'm their ally? Have I not done all I can to protect mortals? This is my last entry in this journal. May God have mercy on our souls. I can't believe it. Okay, so ant antidote... The main quest is prepare to fight the disaster. Talk to Lady Ashbury. So we can go to Lady Ashbury's house. But before we do that, uh, I'll probably leave that for next episode. But now I'll go back to Usher Talltree and give him back his notebook and see what else he knows about everything. So Harriet Jones became the original carrier when Edgar gave her vampire blood. I must tell Elizabeth. Okay, okay, hang on. Okay. So Harry so Harriet Jones. Okay. So Dr. Swansea healed Harriet Jones with the vampire blood and that infected Harriet Jones. And then you're saying that Harriet Jones infected Doris Fletcher? I thought it was the other way around. Mr. Taldry, we need to have a little chat. Good evening, Jonathan Reed. Can I help you in any way? Um, I want to talk to you about your notebook. I found your notebook. The one the guard of Prewen stole from you. And you've brought it back to me. That's excellent uh, news, uh, And I read it. Were you able to keep yourself from reading it? <laughs> nope. No. Ah, the oldest temptation of all. If Pandora herself did not pass the test, I suppose I should not blame you for your curiosity. So you're not angry with me? Why should I be? To live is to make choices, Jonathan. And you made yours. Now give it to me, please. Yeah, just be straight with me. Okay, I'm sick of everyone like keeping secrets. If they just told me what was going on, I'd be able to help more, probably, you know. Uh, okay, can we ask him about any of this? Uh, how do you know about the lives I took? Are you a vampire? Tell me the truth, I don't think he is. Are you a vampire? By the stole, you really thought you could force Usher Talltree to yield to your little mind tricks no, like an I don't oblivious think he is mortal? At all. Why can't I force you to answer me then? I'm the primate of St. Paul's Stole. It comes with certain advantages, like accessing the greatest library in the country and avoiding answering certain questions. Yeah. He's got a strong will. He's not a vampire, though. So, are you or are you not a vampire? As a brilliant man once said, to He's be not. unambiguous could only be to one's own detriment. I don't think he is, anyway. And we want to ask him... Oh, can we not ask him more about the notebook? Well, I just want people to tell me what's going on. I need him... Have you any Tell news me about the calamity and Aloysius stuff. Dawson. What was his last thought, I wonder? Is that really it? This is it? From this guy? Goodbye, sir. Until we meet again. I rarely wander. 
He has nothing to say. Yet it amuses me to converse with your kind. Perhaps London will find that so strange. But I see so he doesn't want to tribes. discuss anything about what was in the notebook. And he doesn't want to discuss anything about the impending doom and the impending calamity and all of that fun stuff. That's so weird. I thought that was going to be like a important conversation. But yeah, I guess the only one around here who's going to be telling me anything useful is Lady Ashbury. So we need to go back there. Yeah, but we can go to Lady Ashbury, which will prepare for the final. Looks like we're getting towards the final kind of part of the game. So we'll end the episode there and next time we'll pick up going to talk to Lady Ashbury and find out if she can tell us anything about what's really going on because nobody seems to want to really tell me the truth about anything and I'm a little bit confused about all of the information that I learned this episode um, but yeah we got some new information some new kind of facts uh, a lot of, a lot more questions that I still have to ask and yeah so we're gonna leave it at that and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode